Origin is uh, it's a tool that goes all the way from the very simple, you know, here's a here's a input set of data, one column. I can plot it quickly, all the way up to really complicated uh, research uh, analysis tool that uh, I myself don't even know half of the functions uh, of Origin. I used it uh, quite a bit uh, in my grad school time and my postdoc time. I've done a lot of sort of numerical fitting and things like that uh, with it, but there's a lot of features uh, regarding statistical analysis that I'm not that familiar with, so uh, you know, there's a lot more to it that I'm going to show you today. Hopefully you might notice something that makes Origin sort of much, much better than Excel. It instantly thinks of two columns of data as, I don't know if this infuriates the rest of you about Excel, but this is, this is what drives me nuts. Um, it instantly thinks of your first column as X and your second column as Y. Uh, so if you were to just grab these two columns and click plot, it would immediately plot a scatter plot or, if you want, line plot of these different data sets. Um, so <clears throat> for me, that's just immediately, that would have been like seven steps on Excel. Another nice thing that uh, Origin offers is if you have a plot like this and you double click on it, you can ask it to show me the worksheet. And this one didn't even have a worksheet before, so it will now create a worksheet for you for that one. Um, it'll do that, one neat thing, it will do that even for like fit functions and things pie chart has some, you know, fun functionality. I don't know, you can change the angle at which you're viewing it. So, like, this if you want to view it from two-dimensional, um, because it didn't seem to have any purpose for showing you a three-dimensional pie chart there. I don't know why it was doing that, but it just looks nicer, I guess. Um, so, yeah, if you like pie charts and histograms, it can certainly do that with pretty little effort. Um, Again, histograms is something, Excel's a nightmare for making histograms. It's, it's atrocious. It's like some special function on some weird menu, um, which makes no sense. Uh, it seems like that would be something that, to do. So, so again, uh, yeah, I think I probably should have said it right off the bat, but I really do see this as a, as a it's like Excel for scientists. It's kind of what, this, what I see this program. So one of the other things that I think that hopefully you can see already is that Origin is very good for getting something, and this is again more on the research end of things than on the uh, on the education end of things. But it's very it's very easy to turn an Origin graph into something that you would very quickly want to put in a publication, um, and so uh, it's very easy to change the colors, change the font sizes, things like that. Under format, there, there's these theme galleries. So there's all these built-in themes, which you might see why physicists might like this. They've got a built-in physical review letters theme, which if I just click it, it prepares the figure immediately in the format that PhysRev letters like. If I apply that, it changes it uh, to black and white. Um, it uh, puts the ticks in the box, and it puts the ticks in rather than out, uh, that sort of thing. So you, there's some built-in formats. You can, do, uh, you can make it black, white on black if you want. Um, speed mode is apparently on, um, which is just something that allows it to, if you have tons of data points like I happen to on this set, it, it's smart enough to know I don't have to plot all of them, I just have to plot enough to make it look pretty on your screen. So, um, so very quickly students could work something up that they would actually look pretty and that they could put in their, uh, in their lab report or their lab notebook, uh, depending on the nature of how you, uh, how you get your stu students to report the data. Um, I think it's good, it gets them sort of, I don't know, in the mode of, of, you know, it's not just what your data is, it's how you present the data. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's the, the sooner they learn that, the better. If you want to do a surface plot that actually sort of gives you a 3D sense of the data, you've got to um, do one extra step. It wants me to just select the Z column and <laughs> convert it to a major. And there you go. So now I've got a five by five matrix. Now it knows how to plot a surface out of that. And uh, so 
So if I want, say, a contour plot, I can get a contour plot. Uh, if I want the real fancy surface map with color, I can get that. I wanted to do fitting, because I think fitting is something that we often have our students do in the lab. Um, so I'll just do something really simple. What I plotted here, obviously, is some very lame little line that should have a slope of 1, but that last data point is, uh, is incorrect. Uh, so let's see if I plot my little scatter plot here. And then fitting, very easy with, uh, with origin. Uh, I go to analysis, I can do linear fits, polynomial fits, exponential decay fits, growth fits, all these different things. With a linear fit, it just one click, it does it, and the information shows up in a little box down here. So it's a linear regression with y equals a plus b times x. So it came up with a slope of 0.84 uh, for my line, which, you know, was looking for a slope of 1, but because this data point was off, it didn't get it. So obviously, with experimental data, uh, you'll often have a case where you want the students to be able to weight the different data points, um, whether it's from some statistical analysis that you know different points are weighted differently or from some knowledge of the, of the uh, experimental error. <clears throat> but uh, the weighting is done pretty simply with a third column. You just tell it what the error is on that, that column, and you tell it to treat this column under set as, you can tell it to treat it as the y error. Okay? And so now, if it knows that's y error, and if I replot this, it'll actually plot the error bars for me automatically. Hmm. So, okay, I've told it now that these data points came with, you know, good error, and uh, that last one came with a high error. And so now when I do the linear fit, it's already going to account for the weighting. Uh, so if I do analysis fit linear, okay, it comes up with a straight line slope that is, and again, it, it always just spits out the information down here. So here's the next, the next fit I did, and it came up with a slope that was obviously a little closer to one because it knew not to weight that, uh, that other point. So here's a Gaussian peak from one of our uh, sophomore lab experiments um, where you've got some uh, counts versus channel number on a multi-channel analyzer. Uh, origin can do a Gaussian fit where it thinks about it for a sec and then spits out um, the fit line there in red. We can thicken that up. <clears throat> and uh, it tells you the function it used to do it. I can do it in various formats, JPEG, uh, I think EMFs are the ones that work nicest for, for Word and PowerPoint. Um, ooh, PDF, I didn't even see that before. That's nice. um, so yeah, you have many, many graphics <coughs> formats that supports. And also, if I want to take um, a data set like this one, and export that as ASCII to just a, a random .dat file. Um, call this straight line two, and I can save it as .dat. And I could tell it whether or not I wanted the column names there or not. Usually, uh, those things just get in the way. So it, off. it actually works very well with Excel. If I if I open up a data file with Excel and I play with it in Excel, and then I want to plot it in Origin instead of Excel, that's actually a way to probably introduce your students to it. Say, so, okay, you can do your functions on Excel, but plot it in Origin, because you can actually just grab a column in Excel, click on a column in Origin, and click Paste, and it goes in. So there's no, you actually don't have to export from Excel to Origin. You just cut and paste from one to the other. 